So Robin Prevett brought up a very good topic, uh, as viewers often do, <clears throat> metformin and dementia. Uh, there have been uh, studies that linked metformin to increased risk of dementia for off and on for years. Uh, there have been other studies, um, perhaps a few more, which showed some decrease in risk for dementia. So <clears throat> why the big deal? Well, obviously the big deal is the number one cause of uh, dementia is insulin resistance and diabetes. Uh, if the medicine, the most common frontline medicine that you give for diabetes is uh, impacts your risk for dementia. We need to know that. So <clears throat> again, thank you, Robin, for bringing the issue up. And thank you, John, for quoting the uh, article on the other side of this debate, one of many. <clears throat> so let's go back to uh, the more, the most recent article showing increased risk. But before we do a brief introduction, Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R, um, and this is the Prevention Channel. Uh, we help you understand the literature, the science behind how to prevent disease, the major killers and disablers like dementia, heart attack, stroke, um, even cancers. Now, <clears throat> this is the ADPD conference. It's a global conference. The one in 2019 is in Lisbon, Portugal. <coughs> ADPD stands for Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. The one in, I think it was 2016, maybe 2017, um, <clears throat> had a study in it where a doc looked at um, metformin use and said, we think metformin use increases risk of dementia. Study metformin, and it was, that's, again, that would be big news if it were true, and so it was picked up by a lot of uh, news feeds. And the imagery here is uh, scary and uh, obvious. <clears throat> so let's look at the study itself, or first look at the doc that did it. It's Dr. Uh, Yi Chun Wan, Quan. K-U-A-N. And what did she do? Well, she looked at the um, at information from Taiwan in New Taipei City. Um, <clears throat> some summaries of information that showed uh, whether or not people were on metformin. It was, a, again, a large public health database. And she saw an increase in, uh, in risk. Now, <clears throat> is, isn't that scary? Well, let's slow down and look at this first. Um, it, if you look at uh, Medscape, it was, first of all, I had the dickens of the time finding this article. There's some challenges with it, and I think we'll, and I'll cover some of that uh, next. Uh, if you looked in Medscape, it did uh, cover some of this information, and they only covered um, the reaction from one observer. His name is Larry Arashevsky. Um, he's a PharmD. Used to be a neuroscientist at University of Texas. Dr. Arashevsky's response was, I'm, quote, very surprised to see the increased risk finding and still skeptical about the, uh, the results. Well, <clears throat> why? Well, because they didn't explain... Uh, to the investigators how they controlled for confounders. And they didn't mention anything about uh, alternative treatments for type 2 hemoglobin or um, stage it using hemoglobin A1C. So we, he starts immediately into the question of confounding. What is confounding? And I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes on that because that's the critical issue in this whole uh, metformin dementia debate. Um, I will hit a spoiler for those of you who want to get straight to what do I think. Uh, I think I think enough research has already been done, very frankly, 
that if either side of this Smith, Foreman dementia debate were strongly positive, it would have shown up, and it hasn't. Um, on the one hand, I don't think um, metformin is a significant risk for uh, uh, dementia, but we'll get into a lot more details around that over the next uh, couple of uh, videos. I'm going to do a, a mini-series on it. Um, <clears throat> on the other hand, if I think if just giving metformin were going to totally re uh, uh, prevent or have a very significant prevention effect uh, for dementia, um, I think that would already be seen too. So again, we'll get into some more details around why there's so much debate about the science that we have seen on this issue. Um, <clears throat> but before we do so again, so what, what do I, uh, recommend? Same thing. I mean, we, we, we've seen this before. Uh, insulin resistance, prediabetes, metabolic syndrome is so common uh, it, and it is a driver of cardiovascular inflammation. It appears to be the, uh, the major driver for, uh, uh, for dementia as well. Um, and we know that just taking metformin is not going to cure either of those issues. There are significant uh, increase in risk as you get older. But uh, lifestyle is three times more important. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be three times more important for uh, prevention of dementia, <clears throat> just like it is for heart attack and stroke. But let's get back to this debate in the science. And again, those of you who love mystery movies and were interested in the um, uh, continued uh, whodunit and and maybe not getting an explanation earlier. Sorry about that. Again, a lot. I get a lot of feedback that uh, just tell me what you think and then move on. Now. <clears throat> So I told you what I think. Those of you who are who are uh, no longer interested at that point, you know, again, it may get a little bit technical here. Confounding. Let's start with that. What is confounding? It's an epidemiological term. Epidemiology. What is that? It's the study. It started out as the study of epidemic. It's the study of transmission of disease, and really. Um, more than anything else, epidemiology is the study of studies. It's the study of medical science. Um, I spent a good bit of time doing that when I was uh, at Hopkins. It's a very interesting, maybe cerebral kind of thing. And if you're not into uh, getting into some of these details, again, consider uh, this is where we're going next. Um, a confounder, very simply, is something that's related to both exposure and disease outcome. So let's say we came up with the theory that um, diuretics cause heart attack and stroke. So we wanted to look at diuretics and see whether they cause heart attack and stroke. So we look at a whole bunch of people. Um, those of, and I can guarantee you what you'll see, you'll see a lot more people having heart attack and stroke that have taken diuretics than people that haven't taken diuretics. But why is that? Well, the number one reason for giving diuretics, at least until recently, um, now the, the some of the standards have changed, was high blood pressure. Well, high blood pressure is very much really related to heart attack and stroke. So how do you tease out um, an increased risk of heart attack and stroke if someone's taken uh, high diuretics or high blood pressure medicine? Guess what? The analogy is very, very similar for the question about uh, diabetes and metformin and um, dementia. If we say, look, metformin is a cause of dementia, the major confounder here is going to be what? Presence of diabetes. The, uh, the number one uh, first-line drug for diabetes and insulin resistance is um, metformin. So if the number one in both of these situations, the number one cause of the disease 
for diuretics, uh, heart attack and stroke, and for um, dementia, uh, metformin. So if these are uh, the number one cause of the problem, the treatment for that number one cause is not... Uh, it's going to be difficult to tease out. The treatment is clearly going to show it's associated with the disease. And sure enough, let's go back to the example that I just talked about. Uh, if you Google, uh, do diuretics cause stroke? And sure enough, you'll see some uh, debate in the literature there. Um, a water pill a day keeps away the strokes. And down here, um, diuretics are associated with increased heart attack risk. So <coughs> obviously, we've got to be very much aware and very concerned about the major potential concern. I, think, I agree 100% with Dr. Arashevsky. I did find the uh, study. Um, I do think there are major uh, potential concerns about uh, confounding in Dr. Kwan's study. Um, and we'll cover that a little bit later. Thank you for your interest.